Um, hello everyone, this is Pastor Kiria Nicholas, Pastor Christ's Ambassador's Church here in Budaka, Uganda. I also led a group, uh, a charity group called Christ's Ambassador's Initiative Foundation here at church, at Christ's Ambassador's Church. And Christ's Ambassador's Initiative Foundation, which is KAIF in abbreviation, uh, started in 2018 and uh, with the purpose of helping the needy, the elderly, the widows, and uh, the, the orphans. So, majorly we do always get our resources and help them, but the need is too much. So, we do welcome everyone to join us to build this vision, because we do help them with the food, clothes, and uh, other basic needs of life. So, I do appreciate ministry uh, I mean, Minister Wayne Shemwell and the entire Minister of Wayne Shemwell Ministries who have come on board to help us. Please join up the efforts and we do help the needy, the orphans, the elderly and the, and the, and the widows. Hello, I'm Minister Wayne Shemwell and you just heard from my dear friend Pastor Nicholas over there in Uganda. You know, Pastor Nicholas is doing a mighty, mighty work over there, and I hope that you will be able to support him. Because, you know, we take for granted uh, what we have here in the United States. We have safety nets like Social Security, we have food stamps, we have Section 8 housing, and we have countless charitable organizations that provide assistance to people in need. That isn't the norm, brothers and sisters. People around the world don't have those safety nets to fall back on. And in particular, the people in Uganda don't. So Brother Nicholas is standing in the gap, providing support for those who need it. And we need to support him and give to his, to his foundation so that he can support the people of Uganda. Uh, Brother, Brother Nicholas is just out there on the battle, doing the Lord's work. You know, the Bible in Matthew chapter 9 tells us that uh, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Well, Brother Nicholas is one of those workers who's out there doing what God wants. So I hope you will support the Christian Pastors Initiative Foundation by giving to this campaign. Amen. God bless you.
everyone. Good morning, everyone. I trust you had a uh, pleasant Valentine's Day and uh, were able to get some chocolate and some candy. I know, I, I know my wife got me some candy and we had a, a, a wonderful dinner. Um, filet mignon, um, asparagus, and, and these amazing rosemary mashed potatoes and of course there were some strawberries I didn't get to eat any strawberries I, I, I got to eat some of those today I didn't eat any strawberries last night but uh, it was a it was a, 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 a wonderful day and I was um, able to uh, enjoy uh, some time with my with my sweetie um, once again, this morning, I ask you to uh, continue to pray for um, Brother Jesse Marah, uh, Pastor Marah, down there in um, Houston, Texas right now, getting treatment for cancer. We pray that everything is successful, that the, uh, the procedures that the doctors uh, prescribe will be will be successful in uh, treating his cancer and bringing him back to Louisville and the North Side North Central uh, Church of Christ in a uh, uh, revived manner. Amen. Amen. Also, let us continue to pray for. Uh, my pastor, Brother Jerry Stevenson, as he under, still is undergoing treatment for um, for um, the pneumonia, and he's at home having antibiotics treatments daily, and uh, we trust that he's getting some rest, well deserved rest, and uh, will come back to us also renewed, revived, and uh, also continue to pray for Wayne Jr. He is doing better. He is doing better. I have to say that he's doing markedly better. Although he did have a little incident yesterday at his day at his day program, but uh, it was just a little blip in the road. And he, he they called me. I talked to him. And everything was fine after that. But uh, so continue to pray for my wife and I that we may find what we need to to serve Wayne. Amen. Amen. All right. And uh, I want to say good morning to. My two loyal viewers, TJ and Sister Karen White, God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning, as always. Well, today we start the book of Mark, so I'm excited about that. We'll get a little, little overview, and then we'll get to our scripture right after our song here. Crucified Laid behind a storm You leave to die Rejected and alone And like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the foe And thought of of 
fight Laid behind the storm You live to die Rejected and alone And like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all Crucified Laid behind the stone You live to die Rejected and alone And like a rose, like a rose. Trampled on the ground On the ground, on the ground. As I said, we're beginning to go into the book of Mark, the second, what's referred to as the synoptic gospel. And Mark is the shortest of the gospels uh, because Mark, it begins at the um, uh, John the Baptist preparing the way. Amen. And Mark focuses more on what Jesus does as opposed to what Jesus says. You know, he's more of a uh, look at Jesus, the person, look at his works um, type of individual. So that is where his focus is. And that is where our focus will be for the next uh, few, few weeks uh, as well as we go through the book of Mark. And we begin with chapter 1. Verse 1 through 28, and it reads, The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance uh, for the forgiveness of sin. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out, went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, and leather belts around his waist and he ate locust and wild honey and this was uh, his message after me comes one more powerful than I the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit the baptism and testing of Jesus mm. At the time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee 
and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Jesus, uh, just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. They went to Capernaum, and when and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he, he taught them as one who had authority, not as the, the, the teachers of the law. Just then a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. The, spirit, the impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were so amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching? And with authority, he gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Amen. You see, Mark starts off immediately showing the, uh, uh, the word of the prophets proclaiming uh, the coming of the Messiah and how there would be one who would prepare a place, uh, prepare the path before him. And that John the Baptist was the one who filled that, that niche. Amen. He fulfilled that prophecy. And then Jesus began, begins his ministry. I mean, that's where, that's where John starts. I mean, where Mark starts. Right with who Jesus is and what Jesus does. And immediately, what does he show? He shows us where he goes and he gets, uh, starts getting his disciples. Immediately he does that. Then, excuse me, then he's tested. He goes out into the wilderness and is tested by Satan. He doesn't get into the specifics as, as uh, Matthew did uh, about, he just says he went out and, and he's showing concisely what Jesus is about, what he's doing. Amen? Then, of course, he goes out from the wilderness and he goes into the synagogue to teach. And he's showing how Jesus' authority is just made so clear by people who hear him. You know, they wonder, is this a new teaching? He teaches with such authority, not like the teachers of the law. Amen. Because he wasn't one of the teachers of the law. He had all authority from heaven in his hand. Heaven and earth in his hands. And he taught with an authority that the teachers of the law never possessed. Amen. All right. Well, are there any uh, prayer requests this morning? Any other prayer requests this morning? Let's see. Uh, thank you, TJ. Appreciate that. Thank, thank you for praying for my family. Let's see. Thank you, Renee. God bless you. Thank you for being on here. 
If you if you don't mind, could you tell us where you're from? If you're still on here, Renee, can you tell us where you're from? And Stephanie Sings is watching this morning. That's a new new a new person on here. God bless you. Thank you all for being here. Anybody have any prayer requests? Any prayer requests? All right. Well, don't forget, you know, we, 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 I'm starting this month, every, every program is going to be starting with the Uganda GoFundMe uh, uh, plea. Uh, I would like to see somebody uh, donate something to the, the people of Uganda. You just click on the donate or the GoFundMe button, a uh, link in, in, in the title there, and uh, you can help the people of Uganda who don't have social security. They don't have food stamps or anything like that. So perhaps we can we can do something for them. All right, let us go to the Lord in prayer. A let's see, make sure. All right. Karen White. Okay, please pray for all right, we'll we'll do that, Karen. God bless you. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day, another day's journey. And this day we will rejoice and be glad in because you have allowed us to wake up one more time. Lord, we realize that it, it wasn't the alarm clock. It wasn't spouses. It, it wasn't the kids. It was you who woke us up this morning. And we acknowledge you. We acknowledge that uh, at this time, Father. And Lord, we ask that you would continue to, to be with us. Uh, Brother Jesse Mara, and, and, and uh, as he goes undergoes that cancer treatment, and be with uh, Pastor uh, Jerry Stevenson as he is still being treated for the pneumonia. And Lord, uh, be with my son Wayne Jr. as we uh, work through the behavior issues that he is he's dealing with. And then Lord, ask you to be with Sister Karen White and her family, and and, and be with her. But Father, you know all the the struggles that she, she deals with and how strong of a sister she is to deal with special needs children and all that that entails. So, Father, continue to strengthen her and help her walk in the path that you have set before her, knowing that all things work for good for those who are called according to your purpose. And I know she's a godly woman, Father. She is a, a great mother, and she has done uh, wonders with her children. And then, Father, be with my friend, uh, Theresa Johnson, TJ, uh, dear friend uh, and classmate. And be with all those who have been on the program this morning, Father, and all those who will be on the program. Uh, Sister Renee, Sister Stephanie, who have been here. God bless you. And, and we ask the Lord that you would be with them and touch them and their families richly. And, Father, we ask also that you would be with those who are struggling right now. Those who are struggling in all the areas of life, you know, those who may have financial issues, those who may have, who have uh, addiction issues, those who may have relationship issues, whatever they may be dealing with, Lord, uh, let touch their hearts and their minds, and especially, Father, those who are dealing with mental health issues. Father, release the, 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 the mindset of, of the stigma and let them reach out for help. Let them know that there is no problem. There is no shame in, in seeking help because you created all these things. You created all of our doctors and all of our medicines and all of our mental health professionals to assist in, in helping your people. So, Father, help those who uh, need that type of assistance to see that there is no stigma in, attached to that. And, Father, we thank you always. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. You know, as I've been doing and I'm going to continue to do, we got to reach out to our brothers and sisters down there in western Kentucky. You can send a donation to the Bread of Life humanitarian effort and just put in the menu on the check, Tornado Relief. They'll be sure that it gets there, or you can go down on, on my in my links, and you can select the donate link, and you know donate a few dollars. These people are going to need help for years to come. They were totally devastated. I mean, destruction was just massive, and that rebuild is going to take some time, and it's going to take our our help to help them get back on their feet. Amen. Amen. 
also um, there is and this touches my heart Chesley Christ Christ um, Chesley Christ uh, um, beautiful young lady um, she had it all as we would say she was Miss USA uh, she was an attorney uh, she was helping disadvantaged people but and she was aware of she was an advocate for mental health uh, uh, prevention and and, and uh, uh, um, suicide prevention and, and and but something came upon her so quick so suddenly that it just overwhelmed her to the point that she decided that to end her life was the only option she had available I know the pain of that type of depression I say it every morning now after my heart attack I fell into a deep depression and I thought about suicide yes I did I managed to get help because of some of the loved ones my loved ones and, and uh, I was able to work through that and I'm not ashamed to say that I got help I'm glad I got help and we all need to understand that there's no stigma there, that we all need help at one time or another. And if you know someone, please call this number, 800-273-8255, so that you can get the assistance, or your loved ones can get the assistance that they need. Amen? Amen. We don't need to, to, to lose another uh, loved one like uh, Chesley. Uh, to the um, uh, to the the tragedy of suicide. Amen. All right. Well, my time has come to a close, and I just want to thank you all for being here this morning once again. Um, and I uh, also want to say that what is going on with this thing that. Uh, we we uh, want to uh, let you know that this Friday at the Midwest Church of Christ, we're going to have the uh, um, Friday Night Live program come back. And the Friday Night Live is for our young people, 10, ages 10 and up. Or if you want a younger, you can show up. We'll find something for you to do. But to get our kids some some alternative activities to, you know, to the streets. So we come, we're going to play games, we're going to feed you, we'll fun, fellowship, and food. Amen. That's what we're, that's what we're going to be doing. So Friday, 6 o'clock, Midwest Church of Christ. I'll start the ads today on that, on that uh, uh, program. So I hope to see you there. All right. Again, as I say in closing... If the love of Christ is in you, let it touch someone in your world today. Well, hmm. It looks as though my program is locked up here this morning. I don't know what's going on. Let's see if I can get this. All right. Well, I apologize this morning. We're not going to have a close. Um, it looks like yeah, it's it's locked up. All right. Modern technology, I tell you, always something. All right. Well, God bless you. And as I always say, if the love of Christ is in you, let it touch someone in your world today. Peace. Hmm. Well, this is not good. <laughs>